There is a story to be told by everyone, a story of struggle, of triumph, of love, of passion. But things aren't always as they seem on the surface. To truly hear it, we must go beneath. Hi, Meredith. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> we are on the bed. We are having a comfy, cozy interview this time. You're my first one where we're actually just getting really comfy and cozy because we're kind of having girl talk today. Awesome. So um, I have, since I first met you about six months ago, been completely obsessed with you. Um, and I have been waiting for this interview because um, I really think the impact that you're having on women, but the more I talk to you, just society in general mm -hmm. is really profound. And so just to delve into your mind today, I'm really excited. Um, let's start. So you started, you've kind of become an internet um, uprising because of your artwork but it hasn't just been your vagina artwork <laughs> but it's meant so much more than just vaginas mm -hmm. so talk to me about the beginning of club clitoris and your artwork sure well I kind of started off uh, drawing vaginas or vulvas as a rebellion against art norms often mm. you see nudes in classical art and modern art there are female nudes uh, highlighted but always slightly covering their genitals or slightly covering their vagina or their vulva. And I thought that was just completely unnecessary and interesting that the vagina is such a taboo topic. Mm -hmm. Even in classical art, paintings, different things like that, um, they're covered up. So I made a zine for Denton Zine Fest where I just uh, illustrated vaginas and <laughs> uh, juxtaposed next to fruit. And I made these zines and I called it Juices. And I sold them at Denton Zine Fest and they sold out. They were a huge hit, they were extremely popular and everyone thought it was either funny or empowering and that's kind of how I started. Mm -hmm. Kind of making a joke but also um, highlighting what people who identify as women mm -hmm. feel ostracized about. Um, their body and this part of them, the vagina or the vulva, that is considered taboo and often gross. Mm -hmm. And I started drawing these variations from all real different women. shapes, yeah. sizes, mm -hmm. yeah. So from real women, colors, um, yeah. yep, all different skin colors, uh, different sizes of labia, different pubic hair, mm -hmm. and it really took off and it became such a very fun and positive pursuit and uh, seemed to make a lot of people feel very uplifted, yeah. so. <laughs> and I think you're right, there has been this kind of shame, unless it's sexualized in mm. porn, mm -hmm. but any, if you take a vagina out of porn, then there seems to be shame about it. Exactly. And so I love that you've kind of shown this light on it that this is natural this is part of life mm -hmm. yeah exactly and now it's kind of and then also your artwork has delved into body hair mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit about that like guess what women we actually have body hair that grows <laughs> on our legs that and that's part of life and then we just are constantly shaving it in the underarm hair and no one has even considered the fact that maybe that's okay mm. <laughs> So that's exactly right. Uh, I started with vaginas, but I kind of delved into different body issues that women are often considered wrong or ugly if they have them, whether it's, you know, a little more extra larger size of a body or body hair mm -hmm. or a different sort of labia and that sort of thing for the vaginas. But I started doing a lot of research into this media um, insecurity causing mm -hmm. advertising type mission and what I found was a lot of women didn't even shave until um, advertising started trying to sell razors mm. and so for a while it was you know body hair is natural very normal but now women you're gonna be sexy if you have clean mm -hmm. shaven legs like buy our razors you and know vaginas. like exactly yeah. shave your armpits you want to be hairless and feminine right mm -hmm. and it became this juxtaposition of you know, smooth skin, hairlessness equals femininity wow. equals womanhood. Sexiness, being wanted, exactly. being exactly. wanted, which is a huge thing. But the reality is, is that society and media sets us up to be insecure. Like people make trillions of dollars selling products 
for our insecurities, men and women alike. Um, surgical procedures, uh, razors, uh, different skin creams, this sort of thing. Nobody makes money on our confidence. Nobody makes money on our happiness and security. People make money keeping us down. People make money keeping us insecure and not confident. Breeding on our fears. Exactly, because mm -hmm. that is what people buy off the shelf, is trying to feel like this perfect ideal of sexiness or beauty uh, in men and women alike, and people who identify as women, etc. Mm -hmm. So, And so, to me, I wanted to draw body hair as a natural thing because it is, because men have body hair and it's normal and it's, you know, it's masculine, masculine yeah. and it's beautiful in its own way. And so why can't female body hair be feminine? Because it is wow. on a woman's body. And as for myself, I do not shave. I have hairy armpits, hairy legs, and I, I love it. I don't have to spend money on razors and, you know, um, nobody really calls me out on How it. How is nobody. that <laughs> transition? Because you're right, we have been so... Um, socialized mm -hmm. to think that that is what is sexy because even I'm so open and even when I hear that I go gosh not to shave you know <laughs> how ha for that transition for you did it lessen how you felt sexy or did it really probably it probably empowered you more than anything well um because you have a boyfriend too. So she has a boyfriend <laughs> that touches her hairy legs and <laughs> armpits. Well, maybe not your armpits, but <laughs> armpit fetish. No, yeah. no, no. Um, well, for me, it. I started actually as a No Shave November. I was like, you know, I'm going to donate to No Shave November and I'm going to grow out my body hair <laughs> because why not, right? I can also participate. Obviously, I don't have a mustache or a beard, but I can participate in my own way. And then I just kept it because mm -hmm. it, it was weird at first. I wasn't used to it. It, you know, obviously it's a different texture, but mm -hmm. it, it was so empowering. I was like, now I'm not a commodity. I'm not buying your product because yeah. you say I have to. Right. You say I have to look or feel a certain way. I'm, I'm just doing what I want with my body. So though it was a transition, um, it was wonderful to keep. Mm -hmm. And I think about a, a hairy vagina. I mean, we are really getting into it today. Hairy <laughs> vagina. But and what that means for women because we are so used when we're about to have intercourse. Mm. What's the first thing we do? We run to the shower and we want to shave. Shave your legs. Shave your shave legs. Your, yep. Shave your vagina because we think that that's. But it is natural. Exactly. And, so, and we number and also we don't see images of that. Exactly. Because in porn we don't see images of that. Right. And any time that they're even in art, if they happen to show a vagina, it's not going to have hair on it. Right. So the fact that you're showing what our bodies naturally look like, that is just resonating with people. Definitely, yeah. I would say definitely the naturalism of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I, that it's okay. Exactly, exactly. I do think that for some reason, unnatural is seen as the better way to be in our society nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people do alter who they are naturally. And though I completely support that, I say right. do what makes you feel happy and love yourself. Do what makes you feel confident. Right. What makes me super upset is people doing it for a societal norm, yes. not for their own comfort or their own like confidence. They're doing it because they think they're wrong naturally. Yes. And that's that's so upsetting. Like who wants to live like that? Who yeah. wants to look in the mirror and say, I was born incorrectly. I need to alter who I am. Yeah for society as opposed to just for myself exactly you know and that's that's so upsetting like no one wants to live like that like every day like hating who they see in the mirror so yeah i mean body hair goes into that the naturalism of body hair in all locations and, and cellulite body and, fat right stretch marks like right. we, that's another thing that society has um, put in all the images and the thousands of images mm. that we see every day we do not see women with bellies we don't mm -hmm. we don't see women with breasts who hang down a little bit like right. we we see we're seeing perfect images all the time and the fact that your your sketches and your artwork is projecting women who may have a little bit of I like how you put it a little bit of extra love yeah you know? I mean and that's the thing is like what is extra anyway like what what mm. does perfect mm. mean because the average size of the American woman, I think, is a 16 now. I, I think it used to be a 14, or I, I don't remember, but the average size of the American woman is a 16. And the majority of people who are not that size or smaller than that size and still think they're unnatural or wrong or ugly, and that's ridiculous because the average is a 16. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it just blows my mind that, myself included, we just dislike what we see in ourselves, even though 
we're either smaller than average or we are the average or people who, I mean, what is the average anyway? Because <laughs> everyone of all sizes is always so, or is kept so insecure mm. as opposed mm. to just enjoying who they are. And, and so, I mean, what's a little extra to one person may be completely normal to another person. And there's no way to gauge what's right or wrong or a normal size because okay. human bodies are so varied and beautiful. There's no such thing as normal. There's no such thing as the right way, right. but the media will have you think there's a right way. Right. And images that have been altered to exactly. look as that we're constantly trying to live up to something that doesn't even exist earlier exactly. when we were talking about, you know, <laughs> looking in the mirror and truly accepting every part of ourselves exactly. and how it's not something that you automate because even though this is your artwork, it's not like you wake up every day going, I love my body and how right. it's formed. It's something that right. we have to continually work on because we're continually fed these images. Exactly. Yeah. Precisely. And I think that that is so harmful because a lot of the images we do see, like you said, are nipped and tucked, mm -hmm. photoshopped, et cetera, et cetera. And this ideal or this perfect standard is not even reality. Totally. So, um, but to your other point, I definitely have struggled a lot with self-love. And if you saw me in high school, I was definitely not at the place that I am now. And I can be so proud that I've come so far because younger me, really didn't want to be here, like didn't love who she was, didn't appreciate anything. But now, even though I do still struggle, it's such a wonderful um, improvement. <laughs> and I can some days just really love who I am. And we talked about that earlier mm -hmm. is constantly looking, we were talking about, um, we were so loving this subject, we couldn't get <laughs> off the phone earlier, but we were talking about how the, you know, the fitness, let's just take, for example, fitness models on Instagram, right? Mm. So, you know, they get the, the six pack, but then they have the breast implants because they have the breast. And some people are naturally built where you have a flat stomach and you have breasts and curve as well. But the majority of us are not. Exactly. We're going to have a little bit of extra. And to get to the point where we stop wishing for other people's bodies. Mm. We mm -hmm. stop wishing for other people's bodies. So hard. But to get to the point where we truly, ex and what it really all gets down to is being wanted. That's mm -hmm. what I believe. I believe the heart of it is we want other people's bodies because we want to be wanted. Mm -hmm. And when we really accept ourselves like whoever is meant to love you is meant to love you whoever's meant to be in your life will because the more you accept yourself the more other people accept you it's you true know? it's true and i know you you know have gone through the same thing and it's neat mm -hmm. to see your progression through that too so what prompted that for you like when you started saying you know what i'm not gonna hate my body anymore well it, it took a while for sure, but I think it came with the beginning of my art. I feel like my art actually saved me in a way because mm. delving into mm. feminism and um, uplifting each other and inclusivity and self-empowerment, and again, like the No Shave November thing, just started on a whim, but then I was like, this is exactly what I want, to be comfortable in my body. And it progressed from there, you know, just accepting all my quirks, who I am, what I look like physically. And what you said is very true. We often want to feel wanted by others, but why do others matter in our own mm. temple, like our own body, like who we are? Of course, we often want to impress other people, but when you look in the mirror, it's only you. You know, you're not, you don't have a crowd behind you critiquing you, you know, it's you. And you're so much more than what you're looking in the exactly. mirror. Exactly. Yeah. So, Yes, it's amazing to feel wanted, but at the end of the day, you only have yourself. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you should want you for you. Mm -hmm. You should want yourself, mm -hmm. right? So Ooh, I love that. <laughs> you should want yourself, yes. <laughs> and you, this has really resonated with, you've gotten a lot of feedback, mm -hmm. for, even from women who are older than you, which I mm -hmm. think is so amazing. Talk about some of the feedback you've gotten from your artwork and what it's done for people. Sure, so um, when I first started doing the different variations of vulvas and vaginas and labia in all different shapes and colors and sizes, I got a lot of Instagram messages that were basically thanking, thanking me for representing 
not this perfect little photoshopped, you know, vagina. And a lot of women said, thank you for showing me that I am not wrong. Like I thought my whole life that my oh, wow. my labia were too big or my this or that, my vagina was wrong, but Ugly. you're showing me exactly mm -hmm. or disgusting or maybe someone told them that it wasn't attractive or this or that and then they see just all these variations, all these drawings that I just, you know, do for fun because, you know, vaginas are beautiful, floral things. And they say, wow, I'm not wrong. You know, I'm not incorrect. I wasn't born with an ugly, you know, vagina. Mm -hmm. I was born normal. Mm -hmm. And it shows in all these different drawings that there's no such thing as a normal vagina. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as the pretty way to look totally. in your vagina. But in that same vein, the New York Times recently put out an article about labiaplasty, which is actually the surgical mm. procedure to cut your labia and alter... Make it thinner? Uh, no, just make it smaller, make it almost disappear. Because some people have labia that protrude, like out of their vagina lips, mm. and they don't like that. It's supposed to be unattractive, so it's, it's actually the highest rate of surgeries in women around 13 in what? teenage women. It's like the highest, most bought surgical procedure for young teenage women because they believe that their, that their bodies, that their vaginas are ugly. And again, please do that if you feel that it is truly right. what you, you want for life for yourself. But a big part of me believes that it's done because society and media says that that's ugly or incorrect and that is heartbreaking. Right. That so many young, young women are you know having a plastic surgery mm -hmm. and um but yeah mm -hmm. that goes back to that point <laughs> right. and i know also kind of i love what about what i love about your artwork is there's really no subject that's off limit off limits <laughs> so you even broach the subject of our periods right talk about that right so a big taboo in our society as as everybody knows is that periods menstruation are supposed to be gross yep. they're supposed to be icky they're supposed to be oh no like you're on your period oh, you must be pmsing girl yeah. like that all this weird stigma around periods. and around men you feel ashamed that blood's coming out of you and some yeah it's exactly. like oh you're on your period yeah. exactly we were and talking about getting it on your underwear and the reaction yes. that you feel bad about yourself for it yeah right, <laughs> right. and i think uh, there's not a lot of education about it like even school sex ed is kind yeah. of a joke and an education about menstruation is definitely a joke but it, it women are like 56 percent of the population or they're like 60 percent they're like they're a huge majority of the population right and this vast majority is so ashamed of a very natural process yes. and obviously like menstruation is directly connected to giving birth. Yes. I mean, you need to have a period to have offspring and like to create life, which is such a spiritual and amazing process. But for some reason, this once a month, um, week long period is seen as horrible, taboo, don't talk about it, it's disgusting, like we don't want to hear about it, et cetera, et cetera, when it's really just like a natural process. Yes. And it's and it's not just a natural process, it's something that's tied to creating life, as I said before, which is so, magical yeah. and I think a lot of people forget that mm -hmm. they just see it as some sort of icky process mm -hmm. and it is hard it's painful a lot of times it comes with cramping obviously it's inconvenient mm -hmm. because as you were saying every lady has stained their panties right. once or twice but um, but I just don't like the taboo atmosphere around it and so that's why I love your artwork you actually do pictures of stained underwear mm -hmm. and yeah and that's really resonated with people it's awesome yeah. yeah um actually i was telling you before but this one woman emailed me and had had a problem with heavy periods and it had really affected her life and she was really interested in this little period panties illustration i had done and basically bought it off my online shop and said it made her feel so happy and empowered and normal mm -hmm. that just because these these cute little panty drawings had blood stains on them or period stains she was like that's normal and and I can accept that even though I have like a heavy menstruation flow that 
that's so beautiful to me yeah. and I'm included. And that was a message that really stuck with me for sure. I love that. And it's resonated with so many of the people who follow you on Instagram mm -hmm. and online, so much so that you woke up one day, and this has all been in the past year, <laughs> right. but you woke up one day and noticed that Willow Smith had reposted right. some, of your, some of your artwork, right? Right, and I actually think it was the period panties drawing, oh, like wow. ironically enough, yeah. yeah. Um, the See, even <laughs> celebrities relate to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, she's actually, actually, I think Willow goes by they pronouns, but oh, okay. um, they have shared a few of my illustrations, which has been wonderful, but the original was the period panties piece, and it had all these comments that were very negative in between comments that were very positive, and wow. I kind of got a small slice of humanity yes. because Willow has like one point something million yeah. followers on Instagram, and I was like, reading through all these comments and a lot of people were ew disgusting and a lot of people were wow this is so like normal like girl i got you like of course i have stains on my underwear sometimes and a, but you know i got a pretty even mix yeah. of reaction but it did bring a lot of people over to club clitoris yeah <laughs> and that's what's so cool though is it's even if today you think that this conversation was pushing you know right on the line or maybe <laughs> over the line but it's to at least think about things differently Right. right. It's it, That's exactly for right. those people to say, ooh, gross, that is our natural reaction to things, you know, mm -hmm. or to see a belly that's like kind of hanging over, you know, and mm -hmm. wh whatever pictures you may see on Club Clitoris or just in real life, our natural reaction is sometimes ooh, gross, but just to begin to think differently and to just own that. And Definitely. we'll sum it up with that, and I love when we were talking earlier, it really is, you. your point that you really wanted to make was about self-love. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. I, I truly believe that if people could look within themselves and just be content and love what they see and who they are, then there's no reason to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. with someone's body hair or with someone's mm -hmm. different size. If someone has, you know, a little bit of a tummy or a little bit here or there, if you, practice self-love in your own life, you only want everyone else to experience love as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that no matter what you do with your body, if you have heavy periods, body hair, you should be able to feel love for yourself and have others love you regardless. Mm -hmm. And I think that that goes for men and women and people who identify as a man or a woman and everyone should feel loved. Everyone deserves mm -hmm. to look in the mirror and not feel hated, mm -hmm. you know, feel hatred towards who you are so it is about acceptance overall <laughs> keep keep your space sacred right like right. begin to accept and love who you are keeping that the the inside of you sacred and then bringing those people in exactly. that can do the exact same thing exactly thank you so much i adore <laughs> Thanks, you jennifer i love you so much thank you guys so much for watching today i hope you guys got something really powerful today and um check her out at club clitoris okay bye guys bye.